Hello, everybody. Konbonwa. Good evening, Konishiwa, wherever you are in Japan or elsewhere. Welcome to my presentation for the Asian Criminological Society. So what I will be talking about today is the criminal justice activism of Naomi Osaka and the tennis player that I'm sure you have heard of many, many times. If it's anything like in the United States, no matter which country you are in, you will have heard about her an awful lot. This is part of a broader project about celebrity culture, particularly during the pandemic, COVID-19, and there in the transformation of celebrity conduct towards celebrity activism, something which had already been happening for a number of years, but which was particularly propelled by the pandemic. So this is an effort in cultural criminology. I'm talking about the overlap between criminal justice and popular culture, and then study di the dynamics of celebrity, particularly in as much as this, this constituted through the media. And indeed, this uh, transformation towards celebrity activism is something that we also see reflected in the career of Naomi Osaka. And what I'm particularly interested in is not only what is it that she does objectively, but also what are subjectively her motives and what is intersubjectively the reception of her work. Naomi Osaka was born in Osaka, indeed, in 1997, a Japanese mother, Haitian father. She moved to the United States to be with her father's parents in 2000, and then gradually developed a career in tennis, which was pretty successful from 2018 onwards, and which since has been only more successful than anything. Now, if we look at her activism, what is remarkable is that it has already gone through various pathways and turning points even though it has only existed for about a year. So the activism of Naomi Osaka started in 2020, so a little over a year ago, right at the time when she had begun to be extremely successful. She was at that time, for the first time, the highest paid woman athlete and had made $37 million in just the prior 12 months. Right after that, just a few weeks later, there was a high profile police killing, the videotape police killing of George Floyd on May 25, 2020. And it is this tragic event that Naomi Osaka responds to in the form of a tweet to show her concern. But that tweet in itself was reacted to. Most of those comments were very positive. And she solidifies this position in an op-ed that she publishes in Esquire magazine, where she reiterates how it was the horrific video, quote unquote, of George Floyd murder and torture at the hands of a police motivated her to speak up and do something about this issue by raising awareness. She also supports the defunding of the police, which you may know in the United States is a very big issue these days. It's a slogan that has become very, very popular. And she says, now, some of this funding, not all of the funding, but some of the funding that nowadays goes to police should be reallocated to social measures within the community, such as the, those having to do with education, housing, youth programs, and so on. She reiterates this position a couple of months later after yet another videotaped police shooting, this one not lethal in fact, but it was nonetheless on the news a lot. And in response to this particular incident, Osaka decides to withdraw from a tennis tournament at the Western and Southern Open. That day, actually, a lot of athletic events were postponed for one day. And indeed, this tournament was also postponed for a day. Then we have the US Open, obviously a very high profile event. And Osaka takes advantage of the reach of this event to wear face masks that carry the names of victims of police and related violence. So this was a very, very visible way of showing her concerns. This event got a lot of media attention, and by getting this media attention and also getting generally a lot of favorable responses, it does what she set out to do, which is to raise awareness, to influence public opinion. Again, she follows this up with an op-ed, this time published in the New York Times, obviously a very central publication. She is very, very successful at this time. And what is important is that she is successful not only on the court, but also off the court to wit the fact that she is receiving a lot of awards, such as here, as you can see, it's a news report of her receiving the Female Athlete of the Year Award from the Associated Press. And why does she get it? Explicitly because she is a tennis champion as well as 
an activist. So whatever activism on criminal justice, on policing that Osaka is engaged in uh, is successful, if you will. It is successful by shaping public opinions. And what is interesting is that this activism, which broadens beyond race to also include gender and other injustices, goes hand in hand with her success as an athlete. She wins the Australian Open and also goes hand in hand with her success on a commercial level. This return to tennis was shortly interrupted when Derek Chauvin, one of the Minneapolis police officers who was involved in the killing of George Floyd, was found guilty. So then we again had Osaka making statements about it, uh, right along with other celebrities. She also, again, continues to get another award, this kind, the Laureus World Sports Award, and again, explicitly for her work both on and off the court. But what is very telling is just a few weeks later is that on May 25, 2021, she was silent about the one year anniversary of the killing of George Floyd, which otherwise was quite well commemorated here in the United States. But at that time, she is for the second year in a row, the highest earning woman athlete, raking in $55 million in the past 12 months. And she doesn't really talk about the issue. So you would kind of think maybe her activism has died down. Uh, maybe it is because she is focused on her tennis. Well, not so. Because shortly thereafter, just a few weeks later, in fact, on May 31, she tweets that she decides to withdraw from the French Open. And she raises issues that have to do with anxiety, feeling vulnerable, having long bouts of depression. And what is very interesting is that this last chapter in Osaka's activism is probably the most successful uh, of all, even though it is just this one tweet. But it has led to an enormous amount of media coverage. And so she has instantly, if you will, become a mental health activist, even though she hasn't really spoken out on the issue so much. So if we now do an analysis, how can we make sense of it sociologically? First of all, we have Osaka's presentation of self, to use a term familiar since Irving Goffman. And what has she done? She has much more than before presented herself as a Black woman athlete. She has really strengthened this notion by means of her hair, by means of her clothing. There is even a clothing line that she is part of that is specifically tailored towards Black and other minority women. Her objective of raising awareness and then also being successful on an institutional level is clearly something that she has been successful at. Whether or not she is also successful at bringing about institutional changes is, of course, too soon to say, but she clearly has been very successful in terms of changing the criminal justice culture. And one of the favorable conditions for this positive reception is the history, the short history that exists in the United States of other activists earlier not having been as favorably received. And particularly significant has been the case of Colin Kaepernick. He has become an icon. So right now, any kind of cancellation of Osaka over her activism is really quite impossible. To wit also how much Osaka has become known as one of the premier celebrity and athlete activists is the extent to which media reports, even about her tennis play, will also make reference to police violence and police brutality. So here you can see some of the headlines. Osaka withdraws from the WTA over police genocide. Naomi Osaka two matches away, drops out in protest of police violence. So even when the issue is tennis, even when she wins the U.S. Open, for instance, there will always be mention of the police issue. The situation in Japan, of course, many of you will know this much better than I do, is different because, uh, first of all, celebrity activism in general is not nearly as developed as it is in the United States, where activism has become one of the products of celebrity. But in Japan, it is much more ambivalent. By and large, the response has been one of relative silence. When the issue is pressed, there is more general support. However, this support towards Osaka activism is first of all condoned because she is such a successful athlete in a sport where no woman from Japan or from Asia in general before has been this su successful. And second, some of this support is tolerated because she talks about issues primarily in the United States. Uh, whenever she speaks about similar issues in Japan, her reception has been much, much more ambiguous.
Like I said before, the criminal justice activism of Osaka is framed as a broader racial justice activism. And I think this connection of criminal justice with racial issues also makes it more likely that she will be received more positively. The numbers show that there have been a lot of police killings in recent years, about a thousand a year. The majority of them are actually white victims. Having said that, disproportionately, black people are still much more at risk of being killed by the police. But the chance of being killed by the police is always very, very small, even in the United States, although it should also be said that the chance of being killed by the police in the United States is much higher than any comparable country. And that has to do with the very high level of violence in the United States in general. And police violence is one dimension thereof. To sum it all up, the question of whether or not athletes should speak out may be interesting, but it is actually not nearly as interesting as to see that they are speaking out and they are speaking out very effectively, at least in shaping public opinion. So this racial justice activism that is part of Osaka's criminal justice activism is at the same time driven by celebrity culture. And as a result, this celebrity culture is not a frivolous issue, it's not at all in our society, because there is such a close connection between celebrity culture and criminal justice culture. People like Osaka, other athletes, other celebrities actually do have something to say that people are listening to. So here you see a headline in a news uh, report from just a few days ago, and I think it is very telling. It reads, Naomi Osaka's activism could save lives. So it is obviously a very, very strong uh, statement. And just by having this statement be seriously reported goes to show that celebrity activism is an important source that criminal justice scholars have to take into account. Thank you very much. Arigato. If you are interested, much of my published writings are available online. What I would also like you to know is that I regularly visit Japan, hope to be in Japan next summer. And I also plan a sabbatical leave in the spring of 2023, uh, particularly in uh, Kyoto, Osaka region, as well as in Tokyo. So if you are interested in that, I would love to hear from you. I like to have uh, contacts in Japan that will allow me to look at it more comparatively, as well as from a transnational point of view. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have a productive meeting. See you next time. Thank you. Arigato.